a few episodes back, we set up inheritance for our clock control. We have a base class for a clock, and then we have two subclasses, an analog clock and a digital clock that inherit from clock. Now that's an inheritance approach to creating custom controls. In this episode, I want to go over a composition approach to creating custom controls. And to do that, I actually got a message from a subscriber who was asking, how can I add a pop-up dialog to this clock so I can dynamically show and hide hands? And this is a perfect example for me to show off how you can use composition to create controls. So we are going to be developing this pop-up dialog for our clocks so that we can dynamically show and hide or customize our clocks. Now let's go ahead and create this control based on composition. So we're going to put it in our custom controls folder and we're going to be creating a user control and we're just going to name this controllable clock. So controllable clock basically controllable just means you can customize the clock. And we're using a user control here because it's going to act as a palette for us where we can add a bunch of controls and compose those controls, hence composition. We can compose them together to create the control that we want rather than inheriting from clock or analog clock or anything in our clock tree. So to start things off, we have this user control and this is where we just define what we want our clock to look like. So what I want to do is I want to actually have kind of like a card structure here and on the front of the card is going to show a clock and you're going to be able to flip the card over and it's going to show a control panel where you can customize the clock and flip some check boxes so you can show seconds and control the clock in that kind of way. So to do that we're going to start off by having a border for our card and so we'll give it a border thickness of one so we can actually see it. Border brush will make it a nice gray and then we should add some quarter radius as well. Just a typical five, not too much. Now inside here we're gonna have a grid so that we can of course compose multiple controls together and we're gonna have inside this grid, let's have another grid and inside this grid we're gonna have a clock. So let's just put our analog clock in here and there we go. So let's actually add some margin to this as well. We'll give it 50 so it, it's away from the border. And then, so this is going to be like the front of the card. And then this is going to be the back of the card in another grid. And inside here, we're going to have a couple row definitions. We'll make this auto. And actually, we're just going to have one row because all that we have right now is just a checkbox and its content will be show seconds. So this checkbox is going to set the show seconds property on the analog clock. And to do that, we're going to have to use a binding. So let's give this a name so we can bind to it. And then let's set that binding on our checkbox. So is checked is going to be a binding to the show seconds property on our analog clock. As you can see it picks up that name so we can bind to that property. And then so this is like our control panel so let's give this some margin too. Actually we're just going to align it in the center of the card. And there we go. So now we have our clock which is going to be the front of the card. We have our control panel which is going to be the back. Now we need a way to toggle between those and to do that we're just going to have a little checkbox up here and we'll name this CB flip card because we're going to have to bind to it so we can toggle which grid is being displayed and this is going to be in the top of the card and we'll put it to the right as well and what we're going to do is we're going to set styles on each of these grids and what those styles are going to do is they're going to have triggers in them that listen to if this checkbox is checked or not and that'll decide which grid should be shown. So we're gonna set a style on this grid and we gotta set the target type, typical styling and then here we go, we got this trigger 
and we're going to have a data trigger. And this is going to be a binding. And we're going to bind to the is checked property for this CB flip card. So we have to specify that name as well. CB flip card. And then if is checked is true, that means that we are actually going to collapse this grid. So we're going to do a setter. And the visibility value will be collapsed. So if this checkbox is checked, this is not going to be shown. The clock is not going to be shown at all. And instead, what we're going to do is let's copy the style, move it down to this grid. So then if the checkbox is unchecked, so we'll set this to false, then this grid is going to be collapsed. So basically what we've done is only one of these grids is going to be shown at a time. Let's add some spacing here so we can explicitly see that. So if the checkbox is checked, this will be collapsed. But if it's unchecked, then this will be collapsed and then this will be visible. And that should be all we need to do for our bindings there. And we'll actually see that as we demonstrated. So let's actually set this up in our main window. And we're going to get rid of our current clocks and we're going to add a controllable clock. And I think we should be good to test this out. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. And there we go. So we have our clock. And I actually want some more margin there. Whoops. So let's give that some margin because that's kind of kind of nasty. Too close to the border. There we go, that looks good. So we're going to click this, and there we go. So for some reason we have two checkboxes there, and that is because this checkbox is actually the flip card checkbox. So what we have to do is let's add some margin. Actually, we should put these in different row definitions. So here, this will clean this up. So this will be an auto height. And then we'll make this take up the rest. So basically, the checkbox and the grids for the content will be in different rows so that they don't overlap, which is the problem that we're having right now. So let's do that. And then both of these will be in grid 1 because only one of them can be shown at a time. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. And one thing we notice is that it actually changes size when we click it. And that is because we are collapsing instead of hiding. So if we set this to hidden, then it won't it won't collapse obviously, so we'll be able to maintain the size as we switch between these. And now we have set up that binding. So if we click this, we are no longer showing seconds. So we have successfully set up this configuration panel. And I think I have too much margin on here. Let's Let's make this like 25 top bottom. That looks a little bit better. Okay. And there we go. So another thing I wanted to do is I want to show you guys that we can actually set this up so that we're not explicitly forced to use an analog clock every single time. So basically, what if I wanted to have a controllable clock, but I wanted the clock to be a digital clock as well? So you could do some funky things here, like actually define like digital clock and then like have some kind of control where you switch between them. But another thing you can do is, as we recall, we have this base class for a clock. So what we can do back in our controllable clock is just say, hey, all we need here is a clock. We don't need to know if we need an analog clock or a digital clock. So to do that, we can just set this, instead of showing an analog clock, we can just show a clock. And then when you create the controllable clock, this control, you can tell which clock you want to display. And if that doesn't make sense, we're about to demonstrate how we can do this. So let's go into our code for this controllable clock. So this is for the user control. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a dependency property. And this dependency property is just going to be that base class clock. 
and we'll just name it clock and then by default we'll make it null and the owner class of course will just be the controllable clock that we are inside of right now and let's clean this up a little bit and there we go so now if we go back into our controllable clock XAML we can get rid of this and instead of showing an analog clock we're gonna show this clock and to do that we'll use a content control and the content in here is gonna be a binding to the clock and that clock is located on the user control so we use relative source here so we can search up the tree and find the user control and find that clock property that we have defined on there and there we go so this actually does break a few things because we no longer have this element named clock that we can bind to and instead what we have to do is we have to bind to that clock that's on the user control so now we're going to bind to clock dot show seconds which is this clock bind to that show seconds and all is good so now if we go back into our main window instead of just finding this controllable clock what we can do is we can tell what clock that should be shown so to do that we're going to access that property that we just created as you can see we now have a clock property and inside this property we can set the clock that we want to show so in this case I'm going to show a digital clock instead and now if I run this we are showing a digital clock and let's make the font size a little bit bigger so it doesn't look all lame make it 48 yeah there we go and there we go so if we do this we can turn off seconds and now we are no longer showing seconds for our clock and this is one of the most powerful things about doing composition rather than inheritance if we had done inheritance here then we would have had to create a controllable clock for our analog clock and our digital clock so basically we would have inherited the analog clock and made something like controllable analog clock and then we would have inherited digital clock and made controllable digital clock but instead we can just create this controllable clock and pass in the abstract type of clock that we want and it'll do all the fancy stuff that we needed to do and it doesn't need to know what type of clock that we're dealing with now if I go back into my main window as you can see all I need to do here is swap in my analog clock and I can show that instead and all it took was one switch all I had to do is switch that control and now we are showing an analog clock instead of a digital clock and now down the road you can define maybe some other type of clock I don't know maybe like a grandfather clock I don't know I don't really know what else you could do with this but you could define a different clock and all you'd have to do is pass it into your controllable clock control and everything would still work anyways that's gonna wrap it up so what we did was we created this controllable clock we have this little card so we can flip between the front of the card which shows the clock and the back of the card which shows a control panel for configuring the clock and then we also set up this clock dependency property so that we can use any type of clock that we want and that's the power of composition as we talked about and the power of composition doesn't just apply to WPF and custom controls it's also super important in other parts of your programming such as just when you're developing classes and is actually usually preferred over inheritance but that's a whole nother topic to get into other than that I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions criticisms or comments be sure to leave them below in the comments section but other than that if you enjoyed the video leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.